Next up for review we have the conclusion to the Magic Knight trilogy released as a mad game and this is called Stormbringer. This of course is the follow up to Spellbound and Nighttime. Let's see how Magic Knight gets on in the final part of the trilogy. As with the other releases in the Magic Knight trilogy, Stormbringer is a mad release but this is the third packaging variation of the mad packaging and this one's got the Stormbringer logo and a, probably a pretty unrepresentative image of a knight fighting a dragon um, based on the previous Magic Knight games there's probably not much fighting goes on in the game and the spine's got the Stormbringer logo on too and the back's got as you'd expect a few screenshots as it says there from the Spectrum version don't expect the Commodore 64 ones to look much different though and info about the game Stormbringer the concluding episode in the acclaimed Magic Knight saga a terrible accident has occurred Magic Knight has accidentally been cloned whilst travelling home in a second hand time machine and his other self the evil Stormbringer is out to destroy him is this the end for Magic Knight featuring the unique windimation system first seen in Spellbound and as you can see there the original was programmed by David Jones this version has probably been ported by another developer inside we've just got the one page of instructions telling you about the game pretty much the same stuff that's already mentioned on the back cover and a bit more backstory you might recall from the earlier games that uh, Magic Knight was trying to rescue his tutor Gimbal the Wizard and blah 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 he found himself catapulted into the 25th century above aboard a spaceship and now he's acquired a second hand time machine finally reaches his own time and planet but with a slight problem a serious malfunction has occurred and the second hand time machine has caused there to be two magic knights off it goes with further information and then you've got to uh, mention about the windimation system which is a kind of an early point and click interface got some controls there as well and uh, the loading instructions and that is pretty much it because the inside is totally blank here we have the title screen then and it's much the same as the title screens for the previous two games in the trilogy. So you've got uh, Stormbringer A True Graphic Adventure by David Jones. Paul Freeman's done the port over to the Commodore 64. Uh, you've got the options to choose joystick or keyboard. The instructions which we'll look at briefly, basically the same stuff that's on the inlay there. And the controls which are in a horrible brown coloured text on a blue background that makes them almost impossible to read. And uh, as it says there, it's Windimation Plus starring you as Magic Knight with all these characters. We'll come to them later. So let's get on with the game. And it looks pretty much the same as the previous entries in the series. Uh, kind of cute, nicely animated sprite for the Magic Knight. Quite detailed backgrounds. Obviously uh, just a clone of the Spectrum graphics, but uh, no colour clash. So it's not too bad. Um, and just like the previous games in the series... You can uh, press fire to activate this menu, which is a kind of point and click interface. I find it somewhat tedious because you have to confirm every action. So, for example, if you want to pick an object up, the only thing to pick up on this screen is a disguise. So we'll pick that up and it tells you what you're carrying. As you can see there, you've got an advert, personal stereo and disguise. So just to go through the same sort of thing that I've done on the previous reviews of the games in this series. If you read something... You can read the advert, execute command, you have to do that every single time for every command. As you can see there, it tells you all the blue about the game. It continues the adventures of Magic Knight for earlier episodes, see Finders Keeper of Spellbound and Nighttime. That's pretty much it for the advert, keep hold of it for now. Uh, also, you may have noticed in my inventory there is a personal stereo. If I choose to wear that, then the music starts listen to that for a little bit as I'm wandering around so his movement is really slow when he's walking left and right so as you'll have seen with the previous games I tend to move around by doing this sort of jumping running thing which actually gets around the screen more quickly there's a sword to pick up there as you can see many of the screens are pretty much identical this guy will kill me if I run into him so I'm not going to, but it's quite a nicely detailed uh, bit of graphics there. Leave the sword for now. Oh yeah, you've got this cloud chasing you as well. 
it'll come onto the screen in a second it kind of moves from side to side and follows you you can see it at the top of the screen there and uh, that every time the lightning strikes from the cloud you uh, get a bit of energy taken away from you so you've got to keep your energy up and you do that by drinking from the bottle of liquid which I've just picked up don't probably need to do that just yet but if you do an examine on yourself you can see that strength there 48 if that gets down to zero then you die of exhaustion so I need to keep an eye on that pretty much okay for the time being but I will need to uh, get the bottle and drink from it at some point so moving along as with the previous games there are characters to interact with this blue guy here for example you can take a look at him he is Aramis Le Pew tells you a little bit about him which doesn't serve a lot of purpose at the moment you can you can give him objects or you can take objects from him he's got a wand of command and a crystal ball so let's take the wand of command just for the sake of taking it also you'll see on the ground there there's a chicken so let's take that as well. No, I don't want to do that. This is what I do a lot, is try and take something rather than pick something up. I don't really want to take that, so I'll just reject that. Uh, pick up an object, pick up the chicken. All will become clear as to why I'm picking the chicken up in due course. So moving through the screens, here's another character, which you can barely see because of the green background. But he's got an object I want, so what I'm going to do first of all is drop one of my own objects. I'm going to drop, in fact I'm just going to, yep, no, let's just drink the liquid and I, and I can get rid of that. You have a drink, you can see it tells you strength and vitality surge through your veins. And just to confirm that, if you then examine yourself, my strength's gone back up to 99. So... What I want from this guy, hang on, let's just drop the uh, empty bottle first. You can only carry so many items, that's why I'm dropping stuff. He's vanished off the screen now. Just a word for the music, it's not too bad, it gets a bit repetitive and I'll probably turn it off sooner or later. Um, you'll notice this particular section, each section's got a name each screen and this one's called end towards and that uh, becomes apparent as to why that is in in a moment or I can make it apparent in a moment well, first I want to take an object from this guy from Robin of Shylock as you can see Barker the Ent lives on this screen any uh, Lord of the Rings fans out there will be familiar with what the Ents are he's one of those three trees there but uh, I actually want to take something from Robin of Shylock so I want the newspaper from him and I'll, I'll explain why in due course but he doesn't want to, oh, it, it, my hands are full, so I've got to drop something first. Oh, he's vanished off the screen now. Where's he gone? He must have gone the other way. There he is. So I need to drop something first. All ah, right, the chicken's laid a golden egg. Now, what I'm going to do is not drop that. I'm going to give that to this guy, because he won't give me the newspaper. I know that from previous playthroughs. So I'm going to give the golden egg to Robin and then he should let me take the newspaper oh he wants to keep the newspaper that's annoying that worked before I'm not really sure, really sure what's happened there I'll take the egg back then oh now I can't pick it up what on earth is going on here I've dropped something and yet oh I've got a silver egg now okay let's try Let's try giving him the silver egg. So, silver egg to Robin. Now his hands are full. What a nightmare this is. This didn't happen when I played it before. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Let's just drop something. Let's drop the wonder command for now. Now let's try and take the newspaper. No, he still wants to keep it. Interesting. So let's try giving him 
Uh, silver egg again. There's nobody in the room, he's vanished now. God almighty, this is not going well. Right. Let's take the golden egg back. My hands are full, my hands are not full, it's lying. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Basically, I was trying to get the newspaper off him, I can't get it off him, so I'm going to play through it a bit more and try and get the newspaper off him and then move to the next part because, frankly, the game's getting on my nerves already. So, finally, I've managed to get Robin to take an egg in exchange for the newspaper. I've actually died and restarted the game in the meantime, and I've also dropped the personal stereo so there's no music at the moment. But uh, the music's nothing to write home about particularly anyway. It's not terrible, but it get, does get kind of boring, as I mentioned earlier. That said, I might go back and get the personal stereo because it's probably better for you as a, as a watcher or a review to hear a bit of music in the background, as well as me droning on. So let's pick up the personal stereo. Here we go, my hands are full. What can I drop then? Right, I'll drop the chicken because I've got a silver egg there. I have got the newspaper now. In fact, what I'll do, instead of dropping the chicken, is I'll drink, especially as this thing's blasting me at the moment, I'll drink the bottle of stuff, drop the empty bottle, and then pick up the broken glass. No, I don't want to pick up the broken glass. That's from the bottle I've just dropped. Probably coming useful at some point. This thing's zapping me like crazy at the moment. It's getting right on my nerves. Oh, I've picked up the broken glass instead of the stereo again. Annoying. Okay, let's drop the broken glass over here. It's very laborious, this game. And frankly, the progress in the game that I've made in any of these games has not been worth the effort. Right, finally pick up the personal stereo and wear the personal stereo and we can get on with the game. So I'm going to head over to the right hand side of the screen through various screens that look almost identical. There's a well in that one more trees and here we get to a castle and there's a guard guard in the castle but he's not of any great consequence what I'm gonna do is read the newspaper now and as you can see there a footman is required urgently at the castle the salary is negotiable so what I picked up earlier on as you might recall is a disguise and you can pick from various disguises so I'm going to t put the disguise of the footman on which actually doesn't make me look any different but what it does let me do is get into the castle so I can progress further into the game I'm going to skip that as a key at the moment and what you can see is as you go through the castle there are things that actually do damage to you so you have got to avoid stuff which I didn't do very well there and you get a few more screens with a bit more varied graphics there's another bottle to pick up which I better do so because I'm probably losing energy hand over fist at the moment yeah I'll definitely need that drink okay so there's also a pink thing there which is an instruction manual uh, but that just tells you the instructions of the game which you've already seen uh, and there's also a lever that you can pull except when you pull it basically nothing happens or at least that's at the moment so you're moving a bit further on you can see this is a, another challenging screen to negotiate although actually if you just walk from left to right they all seem to avoid you no that's true on all of them I'm not sure no it's not interesting when you jump everything moves a bit faster and you get to the end of this screen here and there's a jump shoot but um, that doesn't really seem to work unless I'm missing something. Uh, I'll obviously have to collect something from somewhere. There's also a shield you can pick up there, but I'll just leave that for the time being. I'm going to go back and get that key and see if that helps me in any way. Uh, so basically, if you like the other games, you're going to like this one. If you didn't, you're not. Uh, I didn't particularly. This one's perhaps marginally better as I seem to have made more progress than in any of the other games. 
in the series, uh, but it's just all very tedious and slow and kind of boring as well. Uh, I've never been a big fan of these flick screen adventure games. Um, not really enough action for my liking, but uh, I'll persevere until I lose all my health at least. So there's a key to pick up there, so we'll get that. That's a teleport key, that could be useful. Oh, except of course, my hands are full. I'm going to have to drop something. Um, let's drop the chicken. No, the empty bottle. But actually, let's drop the chicken as well, because I'm going to want to pick two things up here. And I seem to have a silver and a copper egg, so I don't need another chicken laying me another egg for the time being. So, pick up an object, teleport key, and there's also a teleport pad, I think that is. Yeah. So now I should be able to teleport. Yeah. And when you teleport, it was not safe for you to teleport, so you've wound up in limbo. Ah, okay, so I'm in limbo with some items. Power boots. Power boots could be useful. Oh, but my bloody hands are full again. So let's drop the newspaper. Let's hope I don't need that again. Pick up the power boots. Okay. Not sure what good that does me at the moment, but as you can see, I rematerialize in the forest when I come out of limbo. And away I go. Let's see what else I can get up to do. Oh no, now I can't get in there because I haven't got the newspaper. Frustrating. Right. Let's drop the copper egg. I'm going to have to pop to teleport again now. Get that newspaper again. There's a lot of backtracking and going backwards and forwards in these games, which just doesn't sit well with me at all. Right, let's get out of here. Oh, I can't get out that side. Right, back in the forest. So I am now back in the castle. Probably not going to last too much longer because I've got no health left, I don't think. Let's just see if those power boot boots help me jump further up the screen. Oh, and now I've died of exhaustion. And you know what? I honestly don't care. These games are just not for me. I've just got to face it. I think they're well programmed. They're nice, pretty nice graphics. Nice idea, but just way too tedious for my liking. So not worth two ninety nine. And uh, I've frankly had enough of the Magic Knight trilogy, and I'm glad it's over. <laughs>